Hello guys, welcome to another technology moment. Today we're back to Unify in what is this next series of videos from the brand that we have always liked so much and that we return with a very interesting and practical example of a deployment for a medium scale business or a very powerful home as we have already seen that many users prefer. The most important aspect here is how scalable this solution is as well as how future proof it may be for its 10 gigabit per second uplink. This makes this solution applicable to many demanding scenarios for media companies, tech businesses, restaurants, schools, campuses, hotels, gyms. The list is actually endless. The scope of this video is quickly explaining this image so you'll be able to jump to the chapter that you prefer. But of course, we always recommend watching the whole video. First, we're gonna see the outline of the solution that we're gonna deploy. Second, what we received and most important considerations for this case, but remember that this procedure applies in methodology uh, for much more robust deployments as we have seen in other videos. Third, how to do our initial configuration and Unify setup. This when we didn't have an existing Unify equipment and also for users who are starting out with Unify or simply want to get to know it better. Fourth, advantages and consideration of this particular solution or combination of equipment. And finally, our conclusions and opinions about this particular experience. Okay, so right to the point, we'll be deploying this typical scenario in which two access points are located and distributed for spaces of up to two floors and sufficient coverage for extended spaces in which we can involve a switch that provides power over ethernet to those access points and can also manage logical network divisions to increase our security. Also, just for you to know, this is a very useful scenario for hotspots. In this particular case, we will isolate two ports that are in a vulnerable position, so we will only give them access to the internet and not to our network. They are practically outside the house. We're also not going to involve any of the Unify gateways, something that many users prefer, and we'll use the one that the internet service provider has installed, in this case, AT&T something also very typical in many countries. Some users argue that they can take this router up to a minimum of 2.5 gigabit per second. And well, let's remember that the issue of how much we pay for is a matter of ethics and basically we must get what we pay for. Interesting to know how capable these routers are. To contextualize a little, this complete solution involved organizing this power home wiring center where the convergent connections of this house arrive and put simply, it belongs to a user who will technologically demand the most from this infrastructure. Many of the clients are basic equipment, such as televisions, Apple TVs, audio systems, but others will be much more demanding, such as a power NAS, desktop equipment with 2.5 gigabit per second adapters, those will converge in a flex 2.5 gigabit per second switch, as we'll see in a moment. And of course, we'll see the great advantages of this solution in a moment. Okay, so what did we order and what we received? As usual, and it is something that the brand continues to improve, we received the access points very well packaged and with very good accessories. It's also provided these protectors that we can wait until we have them installed to remove them. The switch that we ordered is a perfect match for these access points. It is a great Unify switch POE 2.5 gigabit per second uh, switch with a 10 gigabit per second uplink that makes nine ports. That 10 gigabit per second uplink either by copper or by fiber, which as we've already seen in previous videos, is a great idea to have uplinks with these characteristics and they have enormous advantages. This port automatically negotiates at possible speeds of one, 2.5, 5, and 10 gigabit per second. Whether by copper or by fiber, as we said, we will obtain up to 10 gigabit per second. The other ports are 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which as we're about to see, are essential in a Wi-Fi 7 solution. These also support one gigabit ethernet. Let's remember that these access points not only support PoE plus input, but they no longer support the possibility of powering them directly through power adapters. Instead, they have two alternatives. The possibility of obtaining the injector uh, with the necessary specifications from the brand or connecting it directly to a PoE switch. We'll see more of that in a moment. The most interesting thing about this type of schemes is that they do have the possibility of connecting the uplink to a power over ethernet switch that is capable of providing what Unify and some brands call power over ethernet plus plus plus, also known as power over ethernet plus type four. 
that is up to 100 watts of power, in this case 76 watts that you can draw from that power source. We can then cascade or daisy chain not only network but electricity to this switch and to the other components of the network that in turn depend on this switch such as the Unify 7 Pro access points that we'll see in this case. With the original AC adapter from the brand, you'll be able to squeeze the power up to a combined 196 watts. Very interesting. A mistake that we made so that it doesn't happen to you is that we ordered it without the AC adapter. Yes, it's the first time that we have bought a switch that doesn't include the power adapter. It may delay your project in case that you miss this. This was our case as our uplink goes to this AT&T router that doesn't have any power over Ethernet switch, but instead it has this interesting 5 gigabit per second Ethernet port. It is a great option, although for our internet connection we will not go beyond 1 gigabit per second, at least initially. We instead are going to have connections to our NAS and equipment that is provided with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters, and our speeds were going to be great as we're about to see. Ok, so how do I configure Unify equipment, for those of you who don't know how to do this? The ideal scenario, as always we propose, is to wire your equipment to be deployed in a simple way on top of your desktop. If we're talking about many devices, we can do this in batches, guaranteeing its operation before mounting them in places that are very difficult to access and having a second chance on them is going to be very difficult. We installed on a computer, in this case a Windows PC, the controller that Unify calls now the Unify Network Server, also a name that has constantly changed. After downloading it from Unify's website, we follow the steps on the configuration screen, very simple steps by the way, nothing out of the ordinary, authenticate ourselves with the credentials that we just created until we enter. We go to Devices and we'll find those devices that are nearby and are ready to be adopted. Parenthesis right here at this point. Can we use the Unify app to configure this solution? The short answer is yes, we just need to ensure that everything is connected to the same logical network. We can configure, of course, the wireless networks before or after having joined our devices to the system. This is optional and in this case we're going to join them to our network and then we'll create the networks. This process of adding nearby devices with Unify equipment is called adoption. Adopting them, which by the way uses a technology called in-band management, triggers the configuration of all the equipment, whether one, 10, 50 or many more. This is done quickly and safely through the same network to which they have been connected. This in-band management technology is the one that has increasingly become more popular and other brands have chosen to implement them in their devices, such as the case of TP-Link with the Omata, fantastic devices by the way, and Instant On from HPE. Yes, connecting our devices and having them up and ready in no time is that simple. If we create any firewall exceptions or network-related restrictions, they will only apply if a Unify gateway has been adopted. In this case of these switches, for more advanced configurations such as networks or VLANs, port isolation and so on, we choose the switch that has been adopted, we go to the port manager and we choose the options that we need or we want. In this case, port isolation for these two ports and virtual networks in these two others are chosen. We may change it later, by the way, and you may not even see it active later on this video. Creating the Wi-Fi networks is as simple as going to the configuration menu, to the settings, Wi-Fi networks, and creating one that suits your needs. This is the network as it was planned in this small deployment that will have some 16 workstations, TV sets, and NAS, and very simple wired clients. Also about 40 to 50 connected Wi-Fi devices between laptops, mobile phones, smart devices, and others. Actually, these access points would support many more as we see in the product specifications and as we've also had the opportunity to verify even with simpler equipment. Let us remember that the high user density is one of the strengths of Wi-Fi 7. The secondary part of this network, that is this one, is connected to a very basic 24 port Netgear switch. We've also seen very similar alternatives from TP-Link. They are low demand clients, but it is very important 
that they have wired access. Basically, this configuration generates what we see in this scheme in which these ports cannot access the rest of the network. And in addition, these two other belong to a different camera network, which we only use in this case to provide power over Ethernet to a connected switch that will power three additional IP cameras as each port of this switch delivers the power needed. In other words, we are optimizing the use of this switch. The truth is that after almost four weeks of use, it has worked quite well and let's see what we consider to highlight. One of the great advantages, as we have just seen, is that this switch can be powered up with a power over Ethernet uplink, which can be something very important for many and maybe of a great advantage because it allows us to centralize the electrical supply from which interesting benefits can arise, such as simplifying wiring and offering protection and electrical backup. Also, because this switch supports a powerful backbone of higher than one gigabit per second, this option is very convenient for pairing it with this router that our internet provider has installed and which has a five gigabit per second LAN port. On its one side, being fiber supports speeds well above 2.5 gigabit per second. This means that we do not generate bottlenecks in our network, especially if we want all our clients to have access to our full speed internet provided, even wireless clients with these great access points. As of performance, let's take a look at this internet speed test. Well, this is because in this particular case, a one gigabit per second internet service has been contracted. And of course, this was at one of these points. These same speeds, as we have seen, can be achieved with Wi-Fi 6 and even Wi-Fi 6E far exceeds one gigabit per second. Now let's go to this mobile device that features Wi-Fi 7. This is a Samsung S24 Ultra. In Wi-Fi 7, in the 6 GHz band and without even using MLO, which we can also see in our Wi-Fi 7 videos, takes us to 2.5 gigabit per second. Truly extraordinary performance and hence the need for us to install switches of at least 2.5 gigabit per second and with an uplink of course higher. This, as we said, so no bottlenecks are going to be present. In other words, if we are demanding this connection to its maximum, connecting to a service such as a NAS, the internet access speed at these two points should remain connected to the flex switch or connected through a powerful Wi-Fi 7 client. So both will have full speed access to the NAS or any other service. In other words, it is a matter of thinking carefully about where your clients converge and the speeds that we need at each point. Let's keep in mind that these maximum speeds will depend, of course, on whether our equipment manages to connect with a channel bandwidth of 320 megahertz, which not all clients are going to support. But we can force that connection by choosing that parameter in the controller. This for the special equipment or access point that we need. In this particular case, it was necessary for us to activate our internal speed server to be able to objectively measure the speed. Of course, on this temporary PC, providing it with a 2.5 gigabit per second adapter. Let us also remember that it is very well known that in this case, Samsung and many other devices that use Intel's Wi-Fi 7 adapters have restricted the 6 gigahertz band by geolocation, and there is not much that we can do about it, at least for now. Also, many of you may have already realized at this point that here we're only using the 6 GHz band, which means that if we involved equipment that uses the 5 GHz band in this same access point, this link of this access point, in fact, will already fall short as just another Wi-Fi 6 client could require an additional gigabit per second. Very interesting, yet very powerful devices. Well then, what conclusions do we have? The results have been truly extraordinary. We are very glad having tested all these unified devices again. That is why we have awarded our Technology Moments Medal as it has become our preferred solution. This and after almost four weeks of heavy use, we have noticed important aspects to highlight, such as the fact that there are no disconnections in the internal equipment, the signal is constant and very strong, it handles the 6 GHz spectrum very well, some, for example, will want to create networks that for certain equipment to always be operating at the 6 GHz band. On the other hand, it is still not clear if band steering affects the 6 GHz band, and we are still waiting for MLO in Unify equipment, at least at the moment that we are creating this video. Yes, one year after having already seen it in Omada with extraordinary results. Although, of course, that would imply 
that these access points involve connectivity of at least 10 gigabit per second, as we've already seen it in other models from the same brand. Roaming, on the other hand, is fantastic, and in video calls, handing off from one access point to the other one was completely imperceptible. Of course, this will also depend on the quality of your connected clients. The switch is very stable, as we've also noticed in other solutions, and the Unify network application and its way of managing equipment has increasingly made easier for everybody to implement, especially for those who do not have great technical knowledge, but still want to deploy robust and secure solutions. All the links to the equipment that we use and recommend will leave in the description. Okay guys, we hope that this video has been very useful to you. Remember that your immense support as always, liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.